What's going on you guys? My name is Rage and we are back today to unpack Incursion 2.3 Mutant Section respectively, uh, mainly utilizing the Extreme X-Men team, but we are going to be adding some different characters as well just to make it even easier if you are planning to solo all three nodes yourself in your own lane. So this is my Extreme X-Men hill right now uh, in terms of where they're, they're racking up and as you guys can see, uh, Gambit and Nightcrawler are going to be very, very important to bring up, guys. Um, I do notice that with these higher uh, incursion raids, um, the resistance levels are against us. So uh, probably due to the fact that Nightcrawler, Forge, and Sunspot, uh, you know, are only five stars on my team. Uh, as we get more and more um, shards for them and bring them up higher, it likely will get easier. But in the meantime, I do recommend actually bringing both Gambit and Nightcrawler gear tier 18. Uh, makes it much easier to go through the nodes. Uh, as you'll see in the gameplay footage, um, you you know their damage is very very important to be sustained especially the, the enemies that we're up against uh, we also have cyclops here at level 85 gear tier 16 uh, we have forge at gear tier 17 level 90 and to be honest i am probably going to bring him up um, to gear tier 18 just because it makes it easier and we know that there's likely going to be higher difficulties coming for incursion raids so uh, he is going to be the core of bringing back the team with his revive and the sport buffs and then lastly, we do have Sunspot here, round things, off, round things off here, level 90, gear tier 17. Now, you'll see in my final note playthrough, guys, I actually do bring in Apocalypse as well. So uh, he does make it easier, in my honest opinion, because it's quite difficult to get the one shot on the final boss node. But I found having Apocalypse does make it more consistent. So um, there you guys have it. That's my full team. Let's dive into the gameplay. Now, in my honest opinion, I do think that no one's probably either the hardest or second node second hardest out of the three just because you do need to be very careful how you're kind of setting this up at the very beginning so uh this is what's worked for me i start things off with nightcrawler's um stun actually on a quicksilver just to slow him down then i activate the ability block with sunspot on the left side and then following that up i am actually using the special of cyclops on uh, you know uh Captain Sam there just because we want to be able to take some of those deflects and with the ability block on Vow, I feel pretty good. Next now we are going to be focusing that middle cluster there with Quicksilver and Dormammu um, just because we don't want them getting their abilities off and especially Dormammu, there's been some times with bad RNG that I've, you know, I've resulted in him actually getting the, the heal on their team and it could be a huge setback in the, in the node. So just something to be mindful of. Ideally, it would be great to take him down along with Quicksilver as soon as possible. Once you have Gambit here, activate the ultimate and we kind of start the chain effect of our different abilities that are the most powerful on our team. And we definitely want to be watching out for that. Um, next up, we follow that up with a Nightcrawler um, debuff cleanse right there with his ultimate, giving our team some buffs as well. But at the same time, we're getting ready here for essentially the Cyclops ultimate. Now, Sunspot typically would get his ultimate off, but in this case, he was actually stunned, so we can not really do much about it. Activating Cyclops Ultimate, as you can see, it cleaned up some of these enemies, but um, perhaps having a higher Cyclops would be better. But with these X-Men reworks coming in the future, we might actually be seeing, seeing some different options here. And I do see Cyclops being the odd man out, out of this uh, Extreme X-Men team as well. So now we're going to go ahead. We're just going to make sure that Val doesn't do anything there. But um, now we need to be very careful because, you know, Dormammu is getting close to his turn. And we do actually land, uh, once again, um, the stun on Quicksilver, which buys us more time. There you go, we have the ultimate right there, as you can see, uh, just doing some more damage and work there, doing really, really good stuff. Um, ideally getting Captain Sam down as well before he uses his ultimate is ideal, so that way uh, Dormammu is not getting a second turn. And as you can see, um, he's very close, but it is what it is if he gets his abilities off. So as long as you finish off characters like Quicksilver, um, as well as uh, one of the Captain Sams, it does make it a much more easier. Uh, landing um, a stun on Firestar just to slow them down, the damage dealers, which is pretty big. Okay, so we're looking pretty good, honestly. Only 6 out of 11 enemies remaining, but you can see, remember, uh, both my Nightcrawler and Gambit are gear tier 18, so you can kind of see how, you know, it, the, these nodes are definitely di more difficult than what we've seen with uh, with Bifrost and Mystic, as well as uh, Pegasus and Tech. So I don't hesitate to use uh, Gambit's ultimate for the second time. It does finish off with Mamu, and now we're pretty smooth sailing at this point. You can conserve energy if you want, but um, yeah, this at this point, I just try to target them down, use some specials here and there, but we try to save all the ultimate abilities. Here we go, Firestar goes down, and at this point, it should just be Captain Sam. As you can see, we're still really close to just uh, the the time here, right? So that's what I mean, guys. Um, I do probably plan on bringing up Sunspot and Forge just to make things easier, but it's kind of crazy to see how uh, most of these characters actually do need to be pretty 
maxed out to actually get the nodes done just something to be mindful of you guys are planning to bring this up but again this is the highest uh, incursion rate difficulty right now that we have so uh, it goes well saying maybe i just need to play it more efficient but yeah let me know what you works for you guys as well okay here we go Node two is my most favorite it's usually a joke it's uh by far the easiest out of the three um just because we have actually all of our abilities ready to go from the beginning so we're going to activate things starting off hopefully landing the stun on kang which it does and if it does usually then you can pretty much get through this node relatively easily uh, we're going to start things off with sunspots ultimate with the offense down defense down um, just casting all the debuffs which is huge and kicking things off with Cyclops' ultimate. So obviously having a stronger Cyclops would be able to clean the wave easier, but again, I'm hesitant on that just because um, it's really the other damage dealers such as Nightcrawler and Gambit that are more important. And at this point, yeah, you the first wave is pretty much taken care of. So now we just focus on uh, Red Hulk, but as well now um, this next wave spawning, we do need to be mindful of the rogue. So we try to land the stun on her, which does land. Sometimes it misses, sometimes it doesn't, but you know, thankfully in this case it did. And now we're going to go down the middle there, just doing some work, try to finish off uh, Red Hulk there with the passive attacks, which we do. And um, now that we're controlled uh, Rogue, it's really just about maintaining that control over both Nemesis and Archangel. So sometimes that ability block lands as well on Nemesis, sometimes it doesn't. Again, um, you know, once I think these uh, these resistances are just so difficult to deal with, but thankfully we always have Nightcrawler with his basic ability doing work. I try not to use uh, Sunspot Special just because I do like having it ready to go. Uh, in case things go south in the boss mode, so um, you don't typically need to use it, and, and it is a longer cooldown, so I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of using it, but if you guys would like, it's completely up to you. Uh, just know that you may not uh, have that accessible in the final boss node, but remember, you just want to make sure that Sunspot's ready to go with his ultimate anyway, so not at the end of the world. When it's just down to Archangel and Rogue, not a big deal whatsoever. We just go ahead, same thing. Um, Nightcrawler should be able to cleanse through uh, the buffs that they have thanks to the fact that he's a skirmisher iso 8 and we're just basically cleaning up and using essentially the basic abilities um unless you want to heal up or use any kind of specials but i don't i don't think we need it in this note just because of how easy it is and we're just cleaning up here and wow well, definitely with time to spare which i do like about this note hence why i like this one uh, much uh, more than the first note because of how tight it is and you gotta play it smart so Easy, easy stuff, and now that kind of sets the stage here, guys, for how I'm going to attack the uh, the final boss node here using my mixture team. Okay, so as I alluded to earlier, guys, I'm actually taking out Cyclops for Apocalypse in this uh, the start of the boss node. I've just felt that this is much more consistent because I'm able to land the targets I want, um, and it kind of takes away some of the RNG involved here with the boss node. Now, you can still get this done with Extreme, but again, I just like the guaranteed effectiveness of Apocalypse. Um, especially when things don't go your way. So, for example, you can see I use um, Nightcrawler's ultimate there, and uh, we were able to not really uh, get some of those key buffs off of the Teen Lokis, uh, and this could be quite detrimental for us. Thankfully, Sunspot did fall. With him falling, he's ideally the best one to take down because um, now we can use Forge to use the ultimate, and we basically get a refresh on the ultimate. So, Gambit ultimate there just to do some work, but uh, we're leaning heavy on on the Apocalypse ultimate because. Uh, again, I like the consistency that we're getting more with his uh, ultimate ability, and hence why I like bringing in Apocalypse over Cyclops. It's a little bit more important here. Um, obviously, now we have the ultimate here. We can try to flip as much as we can, but just look at these resistances, right? They're pretty crazy. Now, what I do like about Apocalypse is that he can one-shot one of the Teen Lokis because of his ability. So that takes down one of the key targets now and uh, some of the AoE damage aspect from this team. Now, but the fact remains is that we still are, our sunspot still needs to get resurrected uh, and it's going to give us some buzz when we do that. So this is why taking down one of the team Lokis is big as you can see how much damage they do. And um, it's part of the pain point with this, with this node, with the RNG. So especially Beta Ray, um, he does finish off Apocalypse. So Apocalypse doesn't last long, but he did his job. Now we're going to pretty much be going ahead with the four piece here of Extreme, which still does actually a really good job. So again, rinsing and repeating now. Uh, we have Gambit using his abilities again. We're going to slow things down. Uh, at this point, I'm switching to more of um, a management of, of cooldowns and, and turn meter of the enemies now that we've kind of have one of the team Loki's taken care of. 
and four of the enemies actually uh, stripped away because of the damage that we were able to do. So once again, let's try this again. You try to use um, the Nightcrawler ultimate as much as you can when you have an opportunity to do so because he does give buffs as well to the team and now we can rinse and repeat with the ultimate, another huge burst. So we're just doing as much as we can because at the end of the day, even if you can't one shot this, um, we're putting ourselves in a position where the teammates that we have in our alliance uh, can go ahead and finish this off, right? And that's, that's pretty big. So saving the ultimate there in case we need it because another of our allies likely will fall. And that is gonna spawn now this uh, even more problematic wave, which is inclusive of Wong and Morgan Le Fay. And uh, this is typically where where your team likely will get wiped unless you have gear tier 18 uh, for your full extreme X-Men team. So again, I'm using Gambit, I'm surveying the land, taking a look at who has a turn coming up and using a special. Ideally, it would have been nice to land it on Bishop. It, it was not the case. And as well, I tried to land the special sunspot on Morgan Le Fay. Didn't go as planned as well. So everything is just go. Everything that ha that could have gone gone wrong has gone wrong, and um, that's why I wanted to showcase this on video because you can see we're still going to be doing some really really good work here, um, despite the setbacks and despite uh, us not getting the uh, landing on the right side of RNG here. So we're looking pretty good still um you know the half the, the, the fact remains is half this node is done and we're essentially just trying to do as much damage as we can because we know we probably can't complete it but um the more enemies we take down the easier it's going to become to either uh do a follow-up attack or for our alliance mates to just clean up right so um at this point i do see that my team is getting quite low so i activate the ultimate there just to heal up give ourselves some buffs again um, but yeah, it's too bad that Apocalypse fell so early because he typically uh, would be able to provide a little bit more healing and an ability block, which is huge. Activating Gambit's ultimate for the third time. So you're really wanting just to, him, just to use him to do as much burst as he can, uh, which has been pretty uh, meaningful for us because you can see how many enemies we have taken down. There's only six enemies left. So I mean, this, this uh, initial team has done an exceptional job. And again, we tried to go ahead and stun Marco Lefay and um it, it's just crazy you guys just can't get through our defenses mind you the defense up probably does not help so it is what it is but yeah at this point we're just trying to do as much damage as we can um i would focus more on some of the enemies that are weaker that way it cleans it up um if you got to leave characters like wong and morgan Le Fay around that it is what it is right so you can see once she gets her abilities off it pretty much cleans up your the rest of your team uh and then giving us the wipe here but that's okay we're set up in a really good position now um for success Okay, and then most of us should already have Death Seed built up, so that's who I decided to bring in. I resurrected um, a cheap refresh here to heal back Apocalypse, and we're in a great position now because um, it's this full Death Seed team with Apocalypse, and we're gonna have you know extreme judgment here against uh, against Morgan Le Fay because, um, and again, guys, um, you may not need to be doing this step if you already have your alliance mates uh, not using their Extreme X-Men team, but it's just really hard to get the one shot on this and, and maybe i'm just playing it wrong but at least this way it doesn't eliminate some of the rng and the the retries when you're waiting for good luck in this node um this essentially guarantees it uh, when you do bring in these teams and apocalypse makes that more consistent hence why i want to show you guys this example of how i do it right so you can see how much easier it is and um, you know, again, this is an easy, easy cleanup if maybe your alliance mates, uh, you're waiting on them or maybe they're stuck behind another mutant node. But again, this is the highest difficulty here so far for Incursion 2. And I'm glad that there is a nice kind of workaround inclusive here of Apocalypse, a character that most of us should have built up already if you've uh, invested in the Horseman and you've brought them up um, to get his unlock here. So yeah, easy, easy finish guys. That's how I've been attempting anyways, the mutant notes in the highest difficulty with the most consistency. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below if this has helped. Thank you for your time as always, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.